Welcome back to another episode. It's my first week back in work after being on a road trip and I need this like I need a hole in my head. Anyway, exciting week. We've got an in-roof system to be getting on with using the SIG Energy um, battery system. Fantastic bit of kit. This is gonna be a great job. It's on a south and north facing roof. So the customers utilizing as much as their roof space as they can whilst having a new roof. The lads have been on with that. Let's go check out the progress and see if we can give them a little bit of a helping hand and try not to get in the way too much. See you on site. So here we are at our first job this week. It's 12 panels, six outside, six outside. Customers having a new roof, so we're going in roof. It's a south and a north split due to the fact that the scaffolding's already up. Oh, somebody's having a door fitted. Let's go see what the lad's been up to. Matt's on in the garage with the electrical side. Dale's up on the roof. Let me go and show you what they're doing. So here we are up on the roof. Let me show you the panels or the in-roof trays, should we say. So in-roof trays are down and I've got a little confession. So Dale actually had already panelled both this side and the other side. Stupidly for me though, whilst I was away last week, I ordered the wrong size panels in terms of wattage. So today we're taking them off and swapping the panels. Yeah, accidents happen, but we'll put it right. I'm gonna crack on get this panelled. Maybe we can time lapse this, so it goes. Last panel on this side to go on, and I mentioned it before in some videos, but I'll just show you again. What we like to put on is the arc box. So the arc box is basically just an enclosure. The biggest point of failure on a PV array is the manufactured MC4 plugs, which you can see on the end of that red cable. They're the biggest point of failure. Failure. Any arcing in there could potentially cause heating, um, arcing, and potentially a fire. So we cover our uh, MC4s in the art box. In the unlikely event that there is arcing and you know fires caused, this intermission box will seal up and stop the spread of fire. So it's just another little safety feature we like to include on our jobs. I'm going to get this on, get this last panel on this side before the rain comes in, and then jump down in the garage before cracking on the other side. Let's go. So as it happens, I've turned up at the right time, just in time for a bacon sandwich. Matt's already got the SIG Energy and the two batteries in situ. All of the AC and DCs wired up. It's just on with the board change now. I'm gonna grab a sandwich, then I'll talk you through the setup we've got and show you how Matt's been getting on. So, what have you done? That's Matt just banging his back in the van. Anyway, part of this installation, um, we'll the fuse board. The old one, there wasn't enough spare ways, it was a bit minging. The earth was undersized, the bonding was undersized. So, Matt's ran new bonding in. Bonding's been upgraded. New boards going on with SPD protection, all RCBOs. I don't know if you remember, there was some loose cables along this back wall, which um, has now, put in, now been put in some sort of containment. A couple of sockets added, so we're not using extension leads. Matt's on with that. Let me show you the other end, and I'll show you the, the SIG Energy. So, SIG Energy. What do we know about the SIG Energy system? First of all, it combines inverters and batteries. The inverters can be spec to suit your needs, so a 3.6A, 6 kilowatt, 8 kilowatt, and so on. Battery rise is modular. You can have up to six batteries in any one stack. So this system's got two. 
It's got two 8 kilowatt batteries combining a total of 16 kilowatt hours of storage. That's paired with a 6 kilowatt inverter on this job. SIG Energy are launching, I believe it's the 10 and the 12 kilowatt batteries. And you can mix and match batteries in any configuration, in any order, up to a maximum of six batteries. We can also add to this a SIG Energy EV charger. These are quickly becoming one of the most popular brands in the country in terms of the installation, the flexibility, the price point. Fantastic bit of kit. So the SIG Energy stack in this scenario, we've got it in the garage. We've got our DC isolators up above. So we've got the north and the south roof on its own MPPT. AC isolator, generation meter. Cabling comes down the side nice and neat and tucks away. And we mount all of that on a fireboard just because it looks a lot neater. I really, really like the SIG Energy. The app's great, easy to use, handover's fantastic. And I think it looks pretty decent as well. I'm gonna leave Matt to get this fuse board finished off, all the circuits terminated. Get on with the south side of the panel and swap those over. And I might even show you a little bit more about the uh, Jesse in-roof kit and how that actually functions. Little update. First job back from holiday. I don't know, never goes to plan. Oh, got a CT1 on my lip there. So panels have been swapped over. They're the right ones now. That's what you get for ordering panels whilst you're away in Switzerland. Anyway, they're all done. Zap is on. Matt is nearly done the board. Making absolute banging progress. We've lost a CT clamp on the meter for the battery, so um, we can't commission it, which is a bit of a nightmare. Fortunately though, we've got a delivery tomorrow, so we'll pinch one out of that kit, come back over, throw that on here, get it commissioned. Customer seems happy enough. Yeah. Just really frustrating when things don't go to plan, but it's how you deal with it when um, when it's going that way, I suppose. So I'm going to shoot off, get this van empty because it's loaded up to the to the top with rubbish and cardboard, and we'll come back tomorrow. Let's see how we go tomorrow. Saturday morning. No, let's start that again. Saturday morning. Um, so we've not managed to get the job finished yesterday, and the reason why is this little bad boy. So the SIG Energy Modbus meter and CT clamp, forgot to order it because I was on holiday. No, in fact, I didn't forget to order it. I ordered it and it was never put on the delivery note. Anyway, I've got to go and fit this. I was planning on going skydiving today. That's that out the window. So instead I'm working. I'm going to fit this Modbus CT clamp. Then I can get the battery and system up and working, commissioned, handed over to the customer and then we're all done. So it's taken a little bit longer than it should have. Maybe I shouldn't have booked an installation for the week I got back off holiday and tried to organise it whilst I was away. Nevertheless, we're done, or we will be done. Let me talk to you about GSE in-roof panelling system. So there's mainly two types of in-roof systems on the market now, GSE and Viridian. Viridian supply their own panels with their in-roof system. GSE is a generic mounting or in-roof system, and you could choose what panels you want to go into that. So I first learned how to do GSE, probably what? 10 years ago now, when I was subcontracting to a company called Eco2 Solar, who I believe have now been bought out by um, Eon, I think it is. So they're owned by Eon, but they do all of the new builds up and down the country. So those panels you might see where there's two or three in a site, probably done by Eco2 Solar. Anyway, let me lay out a couple of trays and I'll show you some tips on how I do it. So these are the trays maybe five or six years ago, I'm not too sure, you would have one tray per panel. Now we're using half cells, um, so you get two trays per panel. The way you install it, bottom row flashing, goes down over your tiles, and then your bottom tray, followed by your second tray, flashing goes down the side, down the side there for as, as long as you want. And then you get a top ridge piece, which fits over like so, and tiles can be dressed around it. But I want to show you something. This might be more useful for the installers, but it's also good to know for the homeowner as well. Let me slide that down a little bit. When we're looking at the GSE system, on the tray, I don't know if you can see here, it's got some numbers. So a lot of installers seem to think that these numbers represent the length of the panel. So you've got like 1740. It doesn't. This is used for a table with the GSE configurator and it tells you based on what size panels you're fitting, which number to line the two cells up with. Now what we do, because that's a lot of effort, is we'll get a panel, either measure the internal side or grab a panel, lay it out, so you can lay it up and see where these numbers sit. Now the importance of that is, we want the end of the panel to finish at the end of the tray. We don't want the panel to be going over the tray, it's just not ideal. What that also means is, if you get these numbers right, if you're double stacking them, the next tray here will 
will fit flush to the top and therefore there's no gap between the two and it all looks neat. It can be dressed in and you're not guessing. So take time to measure your panels first. Don't assume that these are for your panel sizes because they're not. So that's the GSC system. Let's get back to the job. There's a Zappi being installed on um, this property. Still, in my opinion, one of the better chargers on the market. I've added a CT clamp around the solar, so just on the MyNG app, because we'll be able to see what the solar's doing as well. I still really like the, uh, the screen on the Zappi. Can't say I'm the biggest fan of the Zappi Glow, but the Zappi 2.1 or whatever it is, 1.2. This Zappi, thoroughly enjoy installing. I'm just gonna set up the CTs, so, like I said, we've got a CT on the grid, a CT on the solar. I've also set an export, an import limitation on it to protect the main fuse, which is getting upgraded next week by the DNO. The SIG Energy is already set up. I'll show you inside and then I'll start tidying up. That is the SIG Energy all commissioned. One of the things I love about the SIG Energy is it literally takes minutes to commission. It's not like some of the other systems out there which are a nightmare, you need to ring technical. Five minutes, commissioned, it does a self-check, tests everything, very straightforward to do. It's connected to Wi-Fi, but we also insert the data dongle. So if the customer wants to lose Wi-Fi, it's got the cellular, cellular connection as well. It just means commission's a bit easier. Pretty much always gonna be connected to the internet for monitoring and, and technical support. Right now, we're producing 2.1 kilowatts. It's not, it's a bit overcast. 2.1 kilowatts. 1.5 is going into the battery and 600 watts is going to the house. There is a washing machine on, so that's sort of changing dynamically. All I've got to do now is label a few things up, do some paperwork, test sheets, get rid of all this back into the van. And then that is possibly Saturday reclaimed. Right, let's get things packed away and tied it up. As always, Doncaster cable for the win. We use PV Ultra, EV Ultra, uh, four core, two core and SWA versions on our job, so great bit of kit. Well done, Sam, for inventing the, the PV Ultra. Nobody ever warns you how much equipment you need to do a job. It's just constant. So that is us all completed. Batteries in, charges and set up, board is done. There are a few little remedial works that are required on the board because we found some faults in some of the circuits in the house. Obviously when we get a board change, it doesn't discriminate. So we do our testing and it picks up everything that's bad, every bit of DIY that's ever been done on the house. And there's definitely some on this that we need to get rectified. The system's working, we're all packed up and it's a Saturday, let's go home.